Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome to Midweek Geek here on Geek Therapy Radio. And before we get into talking about the ri- Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi 4, that is the Raspberry Pi 4 that the Raspberry team has frankly surprised us with. Um, I remember looking up any updates to the Raspberry Pi 3 a, f- a couple months ago, and the official word from Raspberry Pi was that we have no specific release dates, basically no comment on the release of Raspberry Pi 4. But they surprised us, and the Raspberry Pi 4 will be available on June 28th, at least here at Micro Center stores, so I'm looking forward to that. We're going to talk about the specs of the Raspberry Pi 4, but I wanted to talk about something real quick beforehand. I want to talk about Microsoft and Bill Gates basically acknowledging recently in an interview that Microsoft not fighting Android was a $400 billion mistake. So here's my, my, my commentary on that. Back when the first iPhone was released, I think it was 2007, and the first Android device was released in 2008, that was about the time, if you'll remember, that that, uh, Bill Gates was transitioning out of Microsoft to focus his time, retire basically, and focus his time on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and all the wonderful work. Sorry, I'm at work getting distracted. And all the wonderful work they've been doing there in Africa and other parts of the world. So Bill Gates was on the way out in 2006. The iPhone came out in 2007. And Android responded with their first smartphone in 2008 in short succession. The person who took over uh, for for uh, Bill Gates, I keep wanting to say Steve Jobs, that's not right. The person who took over for Bill Gates at Microsoft was Steve Ballmer. Every, you know, you may remember Steve Ballmer. When he, he, in the, the difference in response from the Android side and the Microsoft side is stark and telling. Steve Ballmer looked at the iPhone and said it was a, a $500 smartphone, a.k.a. quote-unquote, the most expensive phone in the world. And he said, again quoting, there is no chance that the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. No chance. Well, to date, Apple has sold over 2 billion iPhones. So that was Steve Ballmer's response over at Microsoft. Now let's look in stark contrast. Andy Rubin, is that his name? Yep, Andy Rubin over at Android at the same time. They both saw the keynote. They both saw Steve Jobs revealing the brand new iPhone. And whereas Microsoft dismissed it, Ballmer at Microsoft completely dismissed it. Andy Rubin was in the car being driven, you know, chauffeured around somewhere. And he made the driver pull over so he could watch the rest of Steve Jobs' uh, unveiling of the iPhone. It was that critical of a turning point in technological uh, history that Microsoft snuffed it, snubbed it, turned their nose up at it, when Android said, we need to speed our process along considerably because this is the next big thing. We need to corner this market. So that was, in in, um, Bill Gates' mind, the biggest mess up of Microsoft's career was not taking the smartphone seriously. So I, I've said in a previous Geek Therapy Radio at some point where I thought Microsoft went wrong was not just that they didn't compete, is that the product they brought, the Windows phones that they brought to market were so so lacking, not just in apps, not just in hardware or anything like that. It just wasn't the same experience you got on the Android side or the iPhone side. And I always thought the biggest mistake Microsoft made in their development of smartphones was not utilizing what they already had and integrating what they already had. They were making low-power Intel Atom chips. They were making other low-power chips. And even right now, they have the, the, the technology and the power of these low TDP, low wattage uh, CPUs is so low, two watts, you can get around the two watts mark, one and a half watts. If they would have put an Intel 
CPU in their smartphones and basically made it a dual mode device to where you plug in a display to it in a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and basically you have a full fledged Windows PC with you at all times in your pocket. If they would have made the Surface phone, the Microsoft Surface phone, if they would have just done that, we wouldn't be having this conversation today and Bill Gates wouldn't have to feel bad that it was a $400 billion mistake not to take uh, Apple seriously with the iPhone. That's my only input on that. I just thought it was interesting that Bill Gates <laughs> he he ended off his his statement, you know, that about it being a four hundred billion dollar mistake with oh well, <laughs> oh well, four hundred billion dollars. All right, so let's move on to the Android Pie. That's what you're tuning in for. That's what I promised at the beginning of this segment. First, I want to go off the specs. Uh, remember I said June 28th is the release date for the uh, Android Pi, <laughs> Android Pi, the Raspberry Pi 4. Here are the specs. It's a Broadcom BCM 2700B0 quad-core A72 ARM processor. So it's 60, so that's all a lot of jargon. It's a quad-core processor, 64-bit processor at 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU is a Broadcom Video Core V1 or 6. Networking, it's two point. It's basically 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. It's the 802.11b, G, A, C, N, whatever. It's got good wireless networking going on there. But here's more the uh, the more important parts. In, in addition to the new uh, SOC processor, the Broadcam processor with quad cores, 1.5 gigahertz. Now the RAM. You're not limited to one gigabyte of RAM anymore in the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. You can now get your choice of one gigabyte, two gigabytes, or four gigabytes of LPDDR4 SD RAM. The Pi 3 was still using DDR2 RAM, LPDDR2 RAM. That is ancient, ancient. So LPDDR4 RAM and your choice of one gigabyte, two gigabyte, or four gigabytes, that's a massive massive improvement. The new Raspberry Pi 4 is going to be leaps and bounds more powerful on the order of two to four times, according to Raspberry, than the outgoing Raspberry Pi uh, 3 or B plus, whatever. The, la the latest, most powerful edition of the Raspberry Pi. Bluetooth is now 5.0, and it's uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE. You still get the same 40 GPIO pins. Uh, the storage is still a uh, microSD card. I was kind of wondering if it would get an M.2 uh, interface, but that was kind of wishful thinking. The whole point of these boards is that they are, they are made to cost. The other biggest things here is it gets gigabit Ethernet and USB 3.0. USB 3.0, that's important because now that micro SD card slot is no longer on the old uh, USB 2.0 protocol. It is now on USB 3.0 protocol, which means it's all the faster. It'll support your high capacity, high data rate micro SD cards. And if you like to boot off of a USB stick, it'll support USB full USB 3.0 speeds. That is amazing. Those are some major, major improvements to the Raspberry Pi 4. So, how much will all of this? Actually, let's go. The, let's go over port selection because it's not. Well, it has changed a little bit here. You get two micro HDMI ports, not just the one uh, HDMI port and, uh, from the old outgoing model. The Raspberry Pi 4 has two HDMI 2.0 ports. That means it supports up to uh, 4K at 60 hertz per port. We'll see how well that's implemented, but you can do up to uh, 4K 60 hertz out of the two micro hdmi 2.0 ports you still have the 3.5 millimeter analog audio and video jack so it outputs composite video as well as audio two usb 2.0s two usb 3.0s like i just mentioned the gigabit e gigabit ethernet that i just mentioned the camera serial interface and the ser uh, display serial interface as well it is all very cool but let's talk about price the three flavors come in, the three flavors of uh, Raspberry Pi 4, come in $35 for the one gigabyte model, $45 for the two gigabyte model, and $55 for the four gigabyte model. My money is on the four gigabyte model. I think that's your best value. For $20 more, you go from one gigabyte of RAM to four gigabytes of RAM. That is massive. So I am stoked that Raspberry Pi has released the 4, and it was kind of fun to wake up 
a couple days ago and see Raspberry Pi 4 has been announced and here's the release date because they really uh, kind of just snuck it on us. Here's what I would like to see, though, and I know a lot of you, you know, might be thinking right now: Is there an update coming to the Raspberry Pi Zero, the five-dollar Raspberry Pi Zero? Unfortunately, not. There's no update in the pipes currently working for the Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's per the reason that you may be suspecting. Just that five dollars is a very, very hard price point to hit, and the technology, in the uh, manufacturing process for CPUs, isn't there that we can kind of, kind of get there. I think it's 22 millimeter nanometer process for the new Raspberry Pi Four. Um, it's just very hard to hit that price point for the Raspberry Pi Zero. So as excited as I might be that this may be heralding in a new Pi Zero, it doesn't look Look like that's going to happen anytime soon that being said we weren't expecting a pi 4 anytime soon and they snuck that on us so are they being cheeky over there at raspberry i hope so maybe we'll see a raspberry pi zero thank you for watching or listening to midweek geek here on geek therapy radio be good to each other be good to yourselves embrace your geek thing lean into your geek thing and know that you are not alone especially here on geek therapy radio until next time take care my geeks